Hello to all Growart SPF 5000 owners out there. Um, this will be a short video regarding a minor issue with the Growarts, um, especially when it comes to communication to um, batteries. Um, as you might know, Growart says in the in the um, manual connect. The battery communication, in my case, this is CAN bus, or it could also be um, RS485, uh, to one of your Grover inverters if you use those in parallel or uh, in three phase mode. Yeah. So at that point, it's super, um, it's your choice which of those inverters you connect it to. Yeah. Because as long as all inverters are running, they share this communication between the devices yeah um, that's why I prefer usually to connect the um, communication cable which is in that case um, my communication cable to the battery to the inverter which is the host inverter um, and why I'm doing that or what is the reason for that um, it's super easy to explain because I have this kind of um, window or energy saving uh, functionality with this uh, kind of relay and this kind of transfer switch. And um, with that, I can switch off inverters completely yeah? uh, within, within uh, a group of connected inverters. And uh, if you follow my other videos, I explain that more in detail, but this only works really um, this only works in, in a parallel single phase setup, yeah? As I have here in my house. So what happens? So um I want to explain you the the, the, the root cause or the, the, the root issue for that, yeah. So if the battery is connected to one of those inverters, and um let's say these two are working at the moment or or are are really in, in practical use um, if I connect it to this inverter and as you see this inverter is off yeah? it doesn't transfer any data with the host inverter when it's in this kind of uh, really um, off state the battery communication is disconnected at this point and um, this will cause the inverter doing weird things especially when you are in um, let's go to five to lithium mode or to use or use two mode yeah because in these modes the Grovat inverters need to have a functional BMS connected to the inverters yeah and I I show you right now what happens if you disconnect the communication between the battery and the inverter and um, I will do this I can disconnect it wherever I want I can disconnect it from here from the CAN bus on my of my battery or I can disconnect it really down here and I'll show you what's happening when I do this yeah and I'm going getting off and the inverter will still 30, 30 seconds roundabout work and uh, look at the transfer switch because we are going, we will go to an arrow state soon because the inverter tries, okay, this was it. The inverter tries to get a con uh, connection to the battery and it says right now fault um, or error 20 and error 4. And um, let's check quickly what these messages are but I think 20 is mm, warning code 4 is battery voltage SOC is too low okay that's clear because the SOC is not readable anymore and there are more informations here 20 is BMM, BMS communication error yeah so the inverter shuts down as soon as it has a, a fault that's clear and this is only the reason if you use battery communication. And this is not something bad, I have to say. It's really not something bad. It's something good because 
um, the inverter realizes that there is something wrong with the communication to the battery or the battery is faulty or whatever, yeah? And that's why it's shutting down. So, as you saw, the transfer switch um, switched over to source B, which is my grid, yeah? And um, everything is still running, no light uh, cutoffs or something or blackouts here happening in the house. So, um, I even cannot start, the, I can start the inverter, but it will go directly to a false state, yeah? So, so what I'm doing right now, I'm getting this back connected, even if you only have um, 90, no, 20, uh, right? Something about, above 20 connected. I will get this to the off state. Oh yeah, it takes time, yeah? No, I have to switch it on like that. And switch it on. So, it's even where I disconnected, the main inverter will go off. And uh, why I showed you this on, on, my, on my host inverter is that it is not even on which inverter you connect your battery communication. Because if you do it like me, switching off inverters in the night to save the uh, own consumption of the inverters, yeah? And your battery is connected to this inverter. And it switches back to battery mode. And uh, okay, and it, and your your battery and your inverter shutting down and your battery is connected to it. All inverters shutting down. And this is, I would call it a luxury uh, issue. If you have, or if you use those inverters, yeah? Usually, I don't know anybody else who's who's using those inverter in this constellation with a kind of um, functionality of, on this um, switching on and off circuits. But um, for me, it's crucial. Yeah. So I looked for getting a solution for that so that I can at least have two inverters and I have a little bit more redundancy. Um, to this uh, whole setup connected to my battery, yeah? So, even if something's going wrong with this Grover inverter and this inverter is still in the on state, I want to have all the battery communications still done with those inverters. And that's why um, these two guys came into my house today and I recently took some um, tests with it, yeah. So this is a RJ45 coupler or or a Y um, um, a gate or however you want to call it. So there is one input and two outputs, yeah. And I have also for testing purpose, I I, I tried another one, and this is that one here. It's also with the R. RJ45, it's a it's a male plug, um, and this uh, couplings or RJ4845 uh, uh, couplings um, where you have something getting out. So, and I can tell you, I tried that just before. My 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 concerns were that the communication to the battery is totally messed up if I have two inverters connected it uh, connected uh, to one battery. But I can tell you right now, after testing around for, 30 min for the last 30 minutes, the inverter is doing really great. Yeah. So for this kind of plug, you can use one one prepared battery cable because these battery cables need to be need to have a special uh, pin alignment and this is really depending on your battery yeah or bms you connecting to it so you need only one of those specially prepared cables if those are really special and you can connect it to this plug here yeah and to this plug to these two plugs you need only standard rj4 45 cables and put it in the canvas if you want to use canvas or rs 45 but i'm using canvas here and putting those those two standard cables which are those here and um this is really in in production at the moment especially this kind of uh, um 
um, adapter, yeah, and you connect those to two inverters, yeah. You can make some some you can play some games with it and buy more of those. I have also two of those at the moment here. Um, and connect more another uh, inverter to it. Yeah, this is all fine. The inverters will deal with that. The communication is still working to the battery, and everything is fine. And uh, you can switch this off, or you can switch this off. At least one has to work, of course. Yeah, and the battery communication is still established between the running. Uh, Growbot SPF 5000 inverters. So this this was uh, regarding that, and there's no other story for this kind of inverter. But this works a little bit different. This one you will plug to the battery CAN bus uh, port, and you use on these two ports. Uh, specially prepared inverters, uh, specially prepared communication to your inverters, yeah? Um, I think this solution is much more better. Oh, sorry. I have to check. This solution is much more better because you need standard two standard cables and only one one cable which is really uh, customized for, for, for the communication. But um, the other version also also works great. So I, I tested both. I tested both and they work great. And I can switch between uh, inverters. I can switch this off and, and switch this on. And, the, and I can run both at the same time and communication is established and they still have all the information from the battery and yeah, for charging and, and so on. So this is one what I wanted to show you and um, I'm sorry for the last few days I had really issues with my Raspberry Pi and my reporting um, here it looks a little bit different as you can see right now because I have to rework all the dashboards and and get all the all the data back on from the database because the SD card was was broken yeah right now I'm I'm using this as a little bit of special setup with the SSD, with the Samsung 840 Evo SSD, and um, yeah, the next step will be getting the relay board back into work, and um, I'm also trying to figure out how to get the Raspberry Pi working with the RS485 communication. So, so maybe we can get rid of those um, Grovards. Um, Shine F sticks, the customized one, yeah. But they are working great. This is only an option for the future. So um, that's it so far. I hope you learned something today, and um, hopefully you will watch my future videos. Um, and with that said, see you and have a nice uh, weekend. Bye.